Hi, Mark here for the Kensington Minute, an English tragedy. If you have not heard about this one, you might be interested. Britain produced far fewer turncoats during World War II than many other allied countries. When this man helped organize the British SS Legion, yes, there was a British SS Legion, it was small, but there was one, he was remarkably unsuccessful. In their finest hour during World War II, few of the British servicemen signed up to join the British Free Legion of the SS, and one guy put the whole thing together, uh, most of it together. Do you know who he was? Yes, spot on, old bean, if you said John Amory, a child of privilege. He was born to a British parliamentarian who later became a minister, and he had above-average intelligence and was reasonably attractive. So why did he embrace the Nazis? Well, as you know, he was not alone. There were those Midford girls, Mosley, and that nastiness around the retired king and his American divorcee. All right, yeah, but... Treason was exceedingly rare among the British. John Amory had all the signs of a classic psychopath and an extreme narcissistic personality. At an early age, he started getting in trouble for lying, cheating, stealing, sexual advances, particularly to other boys. And all of this got him chucked out of the very prestigious college, Harrow. Interestingly, he qualified for admission to Oxford, though he chose not to go. Instead, he spent his time cavorting with prostitutes and drinking, drinking, drinking. He liked to parade these prostitutes draped on his arm. He was also a leech, and he started a lot of businesses that went bankrupt. He very easily got bored with things, a, a sign of a psychopath, but he saw a sign of opportunity and nationalism. It helped feed his sense of grandiosity. During the war, he decided to join William Joyce, Lord Haha, in Britain and work for the Germans. Clever young man. He proposed the creation of a British SS unit to fight for Adolf Hitler. Hitler liked the idea. I think he liked Amory. Amory set up shop in Berlin and produced propaganda films and broadcasted to the British to abandon their war against Hitler and fight against the Soviets, their real enemy, according to Amory. Well, he had very little success. He canvassed prisoners of war camps looking for Britons who had joined the SS, but there were very few who joined. Um, the numbers are disputed, but at, even at its highest point, there were between 25 and 40 of them. Things got worse for Amory, and he was captured by the Italian partisans and handed to the British. What to do with the Harrovian son of Leo Amory, a highly respected minister, and he was, his father, very highly respected. Well, he was charged with high treason. Like the German war criminals who were hanged, Amory was never charged with personally killing anybody. His trial only lasted eight minutes. He knew that if he pled guilty to violating the Treachery Act, he would be hanged. So why didn't he offer a robust defense? Pangs of guilt? Not likely, judging from his past and his constant commentary on just about everything. Some psychopaths often act impulsively. And maybe that's what happened. Well, he was hanged in Wandsworth Prison. You may have heard the old chestnut about his execution, and it goes something like this. The famous Albert Pierpoint hanged him. Now, Pierpoint had become a celebrity with his hanging of so many German war criminals. And the British seemed to enjoy reading about him and listening to him on film. Well... Amory, at his most charming, was alleged to have quipped to him, Oh, hello, Mr. Pierpoint. I have always wanted to meet you, but not quite under these circumstances. Did he really say that? Maybe. It's a good story. This Kensington Minute does not represent the official position of the United States government. Take the Kensington Challenge on our homepage. 
out here.